So hi, welcome to another episode of Tina's Arena. Today I am joined by my friend Annie Vandervong. Hello. <laughs> um, I've actually known Annie, I was thinking about this on the car right here, like 23 years-ish yeah. since grade school, basically. Crazy. Yeah. So I've seen Annie go through a really big journey with like your health and fitness, and I thought it would be really cool for us to go through that a little bit, and you can talk about it. Okay. So um, what was like growing up with food and your relationship to food? Um, I feel like with most Asian parents, like we have to eat all of our food on our plate or else we can't leave the table. And so I struggled with that a lot because I, I would feel full eating, but then my mom would be like, you have to finish all of it. And I remember that I would like just shove all the food in my mouth, hold it in my mouth and say I'm done. And then I would go spit it out in my closet. I don't know why I would do that in my closet, like a weirdo, but like I remember spitting it out in my closet because I was so scared that she would like find out. Yeah. So I think like my relationship with food is like, it, has, it was never really like good. Yeah. Um, and then after I kind of, once I had my own money and I could eat whatever I wanted, I kind of, that's when like my like binging kind of happened. Like my overeating and just like yeah. having no like indicator of when I'm full anymore. Were you already a vegan at that point? No. So I was vegan after I had my two kids. And then that was when I started getting like healthy again. But then I feel like being a vegan is just kind of, I don't want to like upset anyone with this, but like for me, it was kind of just another way of like having some sort of eating disorder, just like a restriction on you. It caused structure for my eating, but at the same time, I wasn't eating that great after a while. Yeah. So it was like, I feel like it wasn't, it didn't work out for me in the end. So after like eight years, I kind of just went back to how I normally ate. And that was weird because you, I think you did that quietly on your own for a while. What were your thoughts when you were thinking about maybe ending veganism? Because I know it scares a lot of people. Yeah, I, I was nervous. So my hair was like thinning a lot at the top. And I was like, this is not like healthy for me because I'm now I was just a junk food vegan. Like in the beginning, I was very healthy, no oil, no sugar, very restrictive. But then after I was like, I had one taste of like the Skittles again. I was like, oh, my God. And then they kind of just spiraled from there. Wait, Skittles are vegan? They are vegan. They are vegan. So like, I didn't have any like sugar before. And then I started eating like Oreos and like the vegan junk food stuff. And then that's when I kind of spiraled. Um, but then when I decided to go back into eating meat again, I started with just like seafood mm -hmm. and I like, I felt guilty. I was almost like embarrassed. So, um, I was scared to eat the food here at the store. Like if I had my lunch, yeah. like I'd be scared to like eat out in public. And then after I was like, it doesn't matter. This is like my journey. So I'm like, I'm just going to embrace it. And then I just like fully went yeah. back. Yeah. Well, you do kind of like your stores did start off as a vegan store, right? Yeah. So did you receive any hate or flack? No, I don't think so because we never came out and said that we are a vegan store. It's just because I was vegan at the time, everything just was vegan. Um, and now we kind of have like, um, we do have a little bit of like dairy in here, but not, we won't have like actual dairy milk, just plant-based still. Um, and we won't have like any meats or anything, but um, yeah, luckily we didn't brand ourselves as like a vegan store. Yeah. So that was okay. So like going through this whole journey, um, what has been your mindset like? Like, did, obviously, you started off with a pretty unhealthy relationship to food, and it led to you wanting to restrict and then becoming vegan, and then that was binging, and then after that, I'm not sure. Um, so, how has your relationship with food progressed through all of this? Now, uh, now it's been it's much better. Like I, before it was like I can't if I'm going to be healthy, I'm not going to have any like junk food, any like cakes, any candies. But now it's more about portion control than restricting what I'm eating. So I, I just decided that I'm going to eat whatever I want, but then I'm going to keep it to a minimum and not like try to binge so much. So like when I was in my relationship, um, it was like kind of enabling because we would go and get like huge like platters of food and just eat it us too. And like it was just it was a ridiculous amount of food. It would feed like six people at least. And we would sit there and eat and eat and eat. And like now I'm just like, if I were to do that, I would just feel like so sick. I've, I've kind of found my, um, what's the word? Like um, my intuitive eating again. Mm -hmm. So when I'm, when I'm full, I'm like, okay, that's it. And I'm able to like stop now. For a lot of people, that's where the struggle is, right? Like going back to the intuitive eating and then like finding your hunger signals. Because I know for me, when I was binging, I didn't know what full felt like. Yeah. 
and I didn't understand when to stop eating. I always wanted food. So how did you learn that kind of stuff? I think I kind of just started to eat slower too. So then once I feel like I'm like going to like throw up the food, that's when I'm like, I, that's it's too much now. So I, I stop. I don't know, like there wasn't like an actual um, like a process that I go through to like get to there. It's just now I'm just practicing a little bit more of like, even, it's still hard. Like sometimes like yesterday I had like a slice of like red velvet cake and normally it was a big slice. And normally I would eat that whole thing, even if I was like two full, I was like, well, I have to finish it. But now I'm like, okay, like I had like half of them, like I'm good, I'm good. And I just stop. Yeah. So it's more of like, it's more my mindset than really listening to my body right now. Yeah. Um, and that's like, I think that's the tough part for sure. Cause some days I'm just like, especially when I'm emotional or like PMSing or something, yeah. I just want to like binge again and just like find comfort in that. So that's really hard to like overcome that like mentally. Um, so it's never, it's always a challenge, always. I think forever it will be. I was actually thinking about this too because yesterday I ate a piece of birthday cake because it was just my brother's birthday. And it wasn't even a big piece. It was actually a tiny piece, but it was a high in sugar. So I got that instant sugar rush. Yeah. And for me, that's like a trigger for my binge behavior when I feel that sugar rush. And I'm like, I should just binge now because like I already did it. Like yeah. I feel it. So it, I didn't binge. I did eat a little bit extra, but like I didn't go full out binge. Yeah. And I was just like, this is just a constant practice all of the time, even though I've been working on this for so long, like those triggers are still there and we're still working on it all of the time. I've, I've still had moments where I'm like overeating, sitting there with like a bag of chips. And then sometimes it hits me. I'm like, I feel like I'm going to throw up because I've eaten so much. And then I'm like, that's those are moments where I'm like, what the hell am I doing? Yeah. So it's it's always going to be like that, I think. It's just some days are harder than others. Yeah. So I'm hearing you say that it's been a practice mm -hmm. for the most part and slowing down. Yeah. Is there anything else? that comes to mind? Like if someone were to ask you now, um, what are the things that you focus on? What would you tell them? Um, for me, I don't focus on healthy eating. I just eat what I want, but make sure that my portions are reasonable. And I think that's what's helped me a lot because if you're trying, if you're already coming from like restrictive eating and then you're like, I have to like eat healthy, all the vegetables, all this, know this, it, it's not going to be sustainable. So for me, this is the most sustainable way is just like eat whatever you want, make sure that you're exercising and then just keep your portions to like something reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. And that's exactly what I tell everyone too. You can't feel like you're restricting entire food groups or like desserts or just sugar in general, because that's what makes us rebel yeah. and then want to binge even more yeah. when you because it, it's like when you eat something that you tell yourself you can't have mm -hmm. then you're automatically a bad person yeah. and if you're a bad person then you might as well just go all out and be a terrible person that makes that makes a lot of sense because then you you are setting yourself up for that guilt so then if you have that piece of chocolate that you're telling yourself not to then you feel like you're a shitty person yeah so that makes a lot of sense yeah and then to me all of the people that i look up to that have healthy relationships with food, they don't restrict mm -hmm. like that. They are eating the cake. They're, you know, having fun at the birthday parties whenever they're there. Like they're just living life. Yeah. And that's the kind of life that I'm trying to yeah. build for myself. It's, it's always going to be like something that you have to work towards for sure. And I think exercising is a huge part for me too in order to keep that lifestyle, keep like that mindset, I guess, is like I know that I'm exercising. So I'm like I'm still staying healthy. And like, yeah. Did you, were you consistent with your exercise uh, like throughout your life? No. So I was up and down, up and down for sure. Like there's times where I'd be like all in, like working out every day. And then I'd like binge and then I would just go back. And then this is the first time in my life ever that it stayed consistent and I've actually enjoyed it. And I think because of that mindset, like before I was like, I have to be super clean and everything. And then now it's like, no, I'm just a regular person. I'm going to like work out, like just do regular things, eat regular food and not just like be so hard on myself. Yeah. So, the, yeah, this is the first time it's been like sticking. That's awesome. Yeah. And then um, so are you sticking to a plan or what's your workout schedule or what are your workouts that you kind of do now? Um, so I started off with Pilates. That was basically what like triggered everything in like a good way, um, because after having kids, like my pelvic floor was all like 
loose and ruined and stuff. And then Pilates basically healed that. I was like, whoa, this is like, this is crazy that like exercising can do that. And I think that was where the shift happened for me because I was like, before it was like exercising to lose weight. Now it's like, I understand how the body works and I'm trying to heal it through exercising. And that's what drives me to like keep going. So I started off with Pilates and then now I'm I'm starting with like weightlift training and stuff. Um, and now I'm adding like running and cardio and stuff in. Um, so I just do like four or five times a week or like and then some days I'm like too tired and like I don't work out. So it's just whatever I feel like, basically. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. The pelvic floor stuff really scares me. Yeah. <laughs> that's, people don't talk about that enough. It's a real thing. Like just doing jumping jacks before I would like pee my pants yeah. laughing. I would pee my pants like. Running from the car to the house to go to the bathroom, I wouldn't make it. And I was like, this is horrible. Yeah. And then after a couple of weeks of like Pilates, I was like, I don't have that problem anymore. And it was just, yeah, it was like a light bulb moment. I was like, this is insane that like exercising, this is, it's what it's doing its job. Yeah. So yeah, that's why I like connected with them. That's why I stuck with them. Like this is, it's healing me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's so cool that Pilates has the power to do all of that. Yeah, it actually started off um, as like rehabilitation exercises for the body. So it's all about like lengthening the spine and like alignment of the body and um, just rehab for it. So it's not about like necessarily losing weight. And I think that that was like a, a key thing for me. Yeah. And then I'm also hearing another thing is that you just started off with just Pilates, right? And it was probably just a couple of times a week you started with Pilates. Uh, so um, actually I started off with like I use this app Freeletics, which is like kind of like CrossFit training. And I, that's what I did when I was vegan. So that's what I like reverted back to when I was trying to get healthy again. And it wasn't like the same. Like I was being very lazy about it and like I wasn't connecting with it. And then that's when I found Pilates. And then I did it, yeah, like four, four or five times a week. And then I just saw it, like changes in my body. And I was like, this is so cool. And then I became a teacher and then like all of this. So it's, yeah, it's been awesome. I mean, I haven't, I'm in yoga teacher training, so I haven't actually taught any classes yet. But I imagine then it's also empowering for you to teach other people this, yeah. like most often women, yeah. probably that are doing Pilates yeah. and having watching them change their bodies and grow for their better and stronger. Yeah, there's actually one lady. So it's actually a lot of like older ladies in the classes. Um, but there is one lady that like from the start when I first started teaching her, she couldn't do like a full roll up, which is like kind of like li from laying down, you're rolling all the way up to sit uh, seated. And she would have to use momentum like to get herself up. And then after a couple of weeks, I saw that she was like actually doing the movement. And it was like crazy. So I'm like, that's that's the whole point of it. And I love that. So I told her, I was like, you, you've you gotten so much stronger. She's like, I know I can feel it. And I was like, this is awesome. Yeah. So yeah, it is very empowering to see it. That's why I love weightlifting. Yeah. Because I just love watching women get stronger and stronger. And whenever I see um, a very, very strong woman at the gym, I'm like, oh my God. But actually was going to, I saw a girl, she was doing like this weird, like art, like chest fly stuff. And her arms were like ripped and I wanted to go up to her and be like, dude, like, you're awesome. You're my hero. And like, she was just so like fit. And I was like, you can tell she was so strong. So like, it is very like to see that. I'm like, yes, go, go do it. I love it. I love like your whole journey. I think it's been so fascinating. You've been on like from one extreme to the another from vegan. And like now we're a lot of yeah. <laughs> I never thought like my life would be like that. I honestly thought I would never be like a healthy, fit person. And then, yeah, honestly, and then Pilates happened. You know what? Me neither. Like, I don't know if you remember, but you were pretty fast in grade school. You were like a really fast runner. Yeah. yeah. I was not. <laughs> <laughs> I was so slow, um, which is funny now because like I'm a pretty decent, okay-ish speed runner. Yeah. Um, but I yeah, I thought I was just doomed to like life on the couch or something. I never imagined myself being, I mean, I still don't see myself as an athletic person. So it's just, it's funny that how the mind works. I think it's a lot of how we grew up too, because I don't want to like stereotype either, but like, at least in my family, like we, it's not a health thing. Like people don't, we don't work out. We don't like think about that stuff. And so I just thought I was never, it's not for me. I was never meant to do any of that stuff. But I think I, I had it in me. And so once I started doing all this stuff, I'm like, I'm actually very capable of this. So yeah, I think it's just a lot of mindset trying to get yourself out of that thinking. I think everybody has it in them, right? Yeah. Like, because like I was so, so dramatically slow and unfit. <laughs> 
And I'm like, I'm doing okay now. Yeah, Yeah, you are. You're doing marathons now. Half marathons. So I just wanted to have this conversation with you because I know you've been like through the full spectrum. Do you feel like you're in a healthy um, relationship with food and exercise now? This is like the third, my 30s is like the best years of my life. Like this is, you have more understanding of how your body works. of like what you want. And then just like understanding your body and the way that you you eat too like I don't know it just I feel like so good in this chapter of my life right now and I I just I just want to keep it going like that's my biggest fear too which maybe might not be a good thing because like I'm facing out out of fear but I like I'm always scared that it's gonna like disappear or like stop so that's why I'm like always like going going trying to like do the next thing to just keep that momentum going so I don't know if that's actually healthy way to think of it but I think it's okay um, David Goggins has the same mindset okay. where he is constantly working out because he's like running away from his former self, which was, um, overweight and lazy. Yeah. Um, but I think there's like merit to it. Okay. Obviously you also know how to approach from it from the other angle of love and like you're respecting yourself and you're listening to your body. So I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. Yeah. <laughs> motivation is motivation yeah. to help you get in the gym and like whatever, I think gets us going yeah. is a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to talk about where we are? We're at my store. We're at Wolf and Rebel. So this is the matcha bar behind us. So we added this um, about like a year ago now. And it's been going really good. We added tattoo artists. We have sushi upstairs. It's just like a whole like girl power shop. Like best friends always come in here and hang out. And like it's just I love the vibe in here. It's so cute in here. You've always had... For it to me, you've always had like great style and vibes, and I've always been so jealous. <laughs> what? I didn't know that. <laughs> I think so. Remember, like we used to have Asian Avenue, and then oh, you would do your pages, and I'm like, she's so good. <laughs> oh my god, I remember that. Yeah, and live journal and stuff too. Okay. Yeah. You've always been super creative, and I've always like admired that in you. Yeah, thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you so much for joining me. I think this has been a really awesome talk. Where can people find you? Um, you can follow me at at heyitsannie.pilates and also book through like the link in my bio for all my classes and the stuff too. Your store is at, at Shop Wolf and Rebel. The matcha bar is where you're serving matcha. Yeah. And there's new flavors coming up. Yeah, all the time. We do like seasonal flavors. We do random specials and stuff. So it's just matcha, but it's like really fun and like cool drinks. Definitely give Annie a follow on Instagram. You can see what I'm talking about when you go to her Instagram page. It's very aesthetic. (laughs) (laughs) And um, yeah, thanks again for joining me. Thank you so much. This was fun. It was fun. Bye.